Hello everybody. In this video, we'll learn about head posture examination. So how do you, when do you check for head posture? So when is the time before going into what are the abnormal head postures? When do we check for head posture? The best time to observe the head posture is when the patient walks into the examination room. Okay. Head posture, please remember, has to be observed with both eyes open. If you cover one eye and then try to check the head posture, it is it will not be correct. Again, best is to observe when you ask the patient to read the first line of the Snellen's chart with both eyes open. So that's when if they have any abnormal head posture, they will adopt it to see it properly when they try to read. But remember, both eyes have to be open to check the head posture. Okay, so why does the patient adopt an abnormal head posture, we'll see. This is to avoid double vision or diplopia. So what happens? Uh, you must all remember that we have corresponding points in the retina. Fovea of one eye is a corresponding point of the fovea of the other eye. Nasal points, nasal, ret nasal retina is a corresp has its corresponding points on the temporal retina of the other eye, okay? Now, in case of an esotropia or an exotropia, I'm just giving you an example of esotropia. This eye is straight, but here this eye is moved inside, inverse. Now, there's an object in the field of the vision. If this is stimulating the fovea of the eye, of one eye, but in the other eye, it is stimulating a nasal retina. It's falling on the nasal retina because the eye is moved inwards. Right? So this is a non-corresponding point of the eye. This eye, any point, any image which falls on the nasal retina, it will always project to the temporal retina. The brain projects, perceives that it must be in the temporal retina. This is why patient has double vision. So in this eye, you're seeing that the, 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 the object is here, but in this eye, the brain is perceiving that the object is coming from somewhere here. So patient perceives it, uh, any image perceives it as double vision. To avoid this diplopia, patient ex, um, adopts the abnormal head posture. So only in paralytic squint, sudden onset squint, patient has developed its binocular vision, has developed its corresponding points, and then suddenly develops paralysis of the muscle because of the muscle palsy or nerve palsy, then he will have double vision and only then he will adopt a abnormal head posture. Abnormal head posture is because of eye problems is not seen in any other condition. So head is turned towards the action of the paralytic muscle. If the right lateral rectus muscle is paralyzed, then there's right esotropia. The patient will adopt an abnormal head posture where his face turns towards the right side. If it is a left lateral rectus palsy, his face will turn towards the left side. Okay. Please remember, abnormal head posture will not, just because I said here squint, it's only seen in paralytic squint. Abnormal head posture will not be seen in comitant squint or in childhood squint, where the eyes have been developed in an abnormal position. So the corresponding points are different in, a, in those eyes, right? So before going to abnormal head posture, we need to know what is normal head posture, okay? So abnormal head postures are three, face turn, head tilt, and chin lift or chin down position. Now, how will, when you see a person, how will you say, it is, this is an abnormal head posture, okay? So how we know, first we learn what is a normal head posture. So if you see a person's face, okay? If you see both the ears, both the ear lobes clearly, both the ear lobes have, if you are sitting in front of the patient, both the ear lobes have to be seen equally, okay? If you don't see that, so in the case of diplopia, so here you see both the patient, uh, patient has a diplopia, so we'll adopt a abnormal head posture. And here you see that the left ear is more prominent, prominent ear lobe is more prominently seen than the right ear, ear lobe if you sit in front of the patient. Patients are adopting an abnormal head posture and when you sit in front of the patient, you will see one ear lobe more prominently than the other ear lobe. This is how you objectively say there is a face turn. Okay. Now, head tilt, how will you make up? So, if you draw lines from the ear lobe to the shoulder on both sides, on both sides, it should be equal. If the patient has head tilt, you see that this side will be smaller than this side. 
if it is still tilted to left side, this side, if you draw a line, perpendicular line from the earlobe to the shoulder, this side it will be shorter than the opposite side. So if this happens, only if they are not equal, then you say that the patient has an abnormal head tilt, abnormal head posture, which is a head tilt. Now, the third pos abnormal head posture is chin lift or chin, uh, chin down position. So how will you say, if you see the patient from the side, you will see that the chin is parallel to the shoulders, right? So in chin down position, it is tilted downwards and in chin up, they're tilted upwards and then it is not parallel. In both the positions, it is not parallel, right? So these are again adopted in case of superior chin down position in case of superior oblique palsy or inferior rectus palsy, right? Or chin up position in ptosis is the most common, superior rectus palsy or inferior oblique palsy. Please remember, it's always in the direction of the paralytic muscle. So if it's chin down, what are the muscles which act or move the eye downwards? Superior oblique and inferior rectus. If it's chin up, what are the muscles uh, which act in the, uh, which move the eye upwards? Superior rectus and inferior oblique palsy. And also, the, but the most common is in ptosis so that the patient can see the, uh, the object clearly to passing through the visual axis or the pupillary axis. So again, I told the head is always turned towards the action of the paralytic muscle. Okay. If it is a upper, if it is a face turn, it is the horizontal muscles. So most often it's the lateral rectus because medial rectus is supplied by third nerve, which also supplies many other muscles. So it's very difficult to see one head posture in case of only medial rectus palsy. Uh, or it's very unusual to have an isolated medial rectus palsy unless it is a restrictive muscle palsy. Um, again, so most often you see abnormal head postures in two muscle uh, palsies, that is lateral rectus and superior oblique. You might see in other muscles, but if they're isolated, and again, I'd say isolated uh, muscle passes of the other muscles is rare because third nerve supplies many muscles. So even a nerve passive, third nerve passive will cause many um, palsy of many muscles and also ptosis. So it's very difficult to for the patient to adopt abnormal head posture in third nerve palsy. But in lateral, in sixth nerve palsy, it supplies only lateral rectus. So the patient will have diplopia and he will try to avoid it and adopt an abnormal head posture. In superior oblique palsy, because of fourth nerve palsy, superior oblique muscle is paralyzed and he will adopt a head tilt. So again, all please remember, head is always turns towards the action of the paralytic muscle. If it's a right lateral rectus palsy, Face because right lateral rectus is an abductor, it the face turns towards the side of the action. So right lateral rectus palsy, right face turn. Left lateral rectus, left face turn. Okay. If it's a chin up position, what what are the muscles which act in the upward gaze? Superior oblique and sorry, superior rectus and inferior oblique. Downward gaze, superior oblique and inferior rectus. Head tilt is in case of oblique muscle palsy, superior oblique. Okay. So this is to done to avoid diplopia or double vision. So now we'll again go to lateral rectus palsy. So if in case of lateral rectus palsy, if it is right lateral rectus palsy, the eye is not moving toward the right side. So patient will be having diplopia. So to avoid diplopia, he'll move the whole face towards that side so that he will not have double vision. So please remember, right lateral rectus palsy, face turn to right. Left lateral rectus palsy, face turn to left. Superior oblique muscle palsy will cause head tilt. Okay. So the right eye is extorted and slightly elevated, causing double vision to compensate this. In case of right uh, superior oblique palsy, the eye patient tilts the head to the left. So right superior oblique palsy, head, dis head tilt to left. Left superior oblique palsy, head tilt to right. Ptosis. In order to get a vision, a clear visual activity, so that the he, the patient tries to lift his head up to see, so so that the uh, light passes through his pupil. Okay, so that he will have a chin up position and ensure light passes through the pupil. So in summary, if head posture is normal, please write it as normal. You will check for everything whether the you see both the earlobes clearly. 
when sitting in front of the patient, you'll see that the distance between the ear lobe and the shoulder is equal. And you'll see from the side to see whether there's chin up or down. You will look for them, but you will not write it as no face turn, no head tilt, no chin up or down. You will say head posture is normal, erect and straight. That's what you will write if it is normal. Thank you very much.